What's up, everyone? You're hanging out with Max Green from Escape the Fate, and you're watching Caliber TV. What's up, guys? You're watching Caliber TV, and I'm hanging out with Max Green from Escape the Fate. What's going on, man? <laughs> going pretty good. How you doing now? Good, good. Real good, man. Just uh, wrapped up the Bury the Hatchet tour a couple days ago, and uh, now we're out doing the tour with New Year's Day and Eve to Adam, and uh, it's going cool. It's going yeah. Good. Actually, I was just about to ask you. You guys just finished tour with that tour with uh, Falling in Reverse. How was it uh, touring with your old friend, Ronnie? Oh man, it was it was amazing. Honestly, it was like uh, it was like reliving our high school days all over again, man. Just getting crazy, having tons of laughs, um, playing video games all day long. Like it was massive fun. All right. So, what are some stories that you can tell us that happened during the tour with them? Um. Well, I'll tell you about the, the thing that's most fresh in my mind right now is uh, the end of tour prank they pulled on us, and that was uh, we were on stage, you know, playing our song and stuff like that, or playing our set. And um, <clears throat> some of the guys in my crew, like like damn fools, gave away the combination to our bus door. Oh. So they already had, they already knew a way to get under our bus. So we're we're playing our set. We're like maybe three songs from wrapping it up, and all of a sudden we're like have this little interlude thing going on. We're like we talk to the crowd and stuff, and all of a sudden we hear Ronnie's voice coming through the speakers on stage. And we're like, what the hell's going on? He's like, hey guys, you know. I just want to let you know I love you and da da da, but it's the last day of tour and I got you guys. And earlier I was joking around. I told Ronnie that I put a curse on his bus, mm -hmm. and he's like, "You know, Max, you said you put a curse on my bus. Well, after you get done, good luck getting in your bus." And I was like, "Oh, oh. my God, what happened?" So we get off stage, and our bus is is saran wrapped. Our trailer's saran wrapped, but that's not even that's not even the best part. Then. We go, Ronnie runs out, he's like, Max, he's like, you gotta get in front, I wanna see your face when you open this door. I open the door, and they fit 22 of those big industrial, like, giant bags of uh, packing peanuts into our bus. And Whoa. so as soon as I open the door, it all just came ro rolling out all over me. Ouch. And so we all get in the bus, and we walk on the bus, and there's packing foam peanuts, uh, like... Our bus is half full of them, like literally half full. And then we open the the first sort of the bunk area, and that's full too. And oh I had a, and I have a bottom bunk, so I open my curtain and yeah, more just keeps full. Yeah, so we're like literally, literally swimming through all this packing foam. I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, man! Like, so I mean, that was just like madness. But I mean, yeah, every that's day a good was prank. yeah. That's a real good prank. That's yeah. a real good prank. Just right wrap your whole bus and fill it with peanuts. Yeah, exactly. He said they he spent money on like twenty two bags of that shit I'm like oh my gosh oh, man that's an expensive prank <laughs> yeah so you guys have toured various countries what was it like exploring different cultures and did any of them in particular shock you um you know yeah we've, we've been a lot of places and uh one of my favorite places that we've been was uh japan i took japanese for two years in high school i've always been obsessed with the culture and like you know different regions of japan and stuff like that and um just just to see how they act it was crazy because like when you go there and you're playing shows a lot of the kids and stuff like that, like they're still raised in that very like old school mentality of like Japanese culture and respect and this and that. Yeah. So you, you're playing your show and you get done with your song, and like no one really makes any noise. There might be like a handful of kids that cheer, or, like you hear singing along, but every time you're playing, like the crowd is silent because they feel like it's a sign of disrespect. I, I heard that. Um, they don't want to interrupt you while you're doing your thing. But it's like here in the States, like kids are crowd surfing, singing along, all that stuff. So to go to Japan, yeah. and I was like, do they even like us over here or what? Like, are we sucking tonight? Like, what the hell? Like, I know it's not me. Yeah, I'm like, what's, like, what's, going, what's on? going on? Why is the whole crowd quiet? But, uh, so that's uh, kind, of, kind of weird. And then my interpreter told me, he's like, no, 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 that's how it is over here. Like, it, they, they respect you so much. Like, if they don't make any noise, you're doing a great job. I'm like, oh, oh wow. cool. Well, how have your fans been over the years, and do you feel like anything has they changed you, or have you changed them? Um, the fans have been phenomenal over the years, man. They've been phenomenal. Even, uh, you know, through my uh, brief departure with the band, um, you know, one of my biggest fears, honestly, was uh, being forgotten by my fans and stuff like that. Never. And, you know, they, they were really great. They, they had my back. They gave me, they showed me the love and support to help me get back on my feet and to, uh, and, and to come back to the band and, you know, and to be able to come out and do interviews like this and to put on shows like we're doing and, you know, the Barry the Hatchet tour and everything else like that. And, uh, here comes Kevin Thrasher, everyone. Hey, Kevin Thrasher. <laughs> oh, what's up? <laughs> 
What's up, buddy? That is a camera. What's up, everyone? How you doing? This, uh, this is Max Green. He looks amazing right now, right? <laughs> Thanks. You look amazing. Right. What are some of the life lessons that you learned over the years as a band, but also as a person? Um, you know, being in a band and the things that you learn, like, through being in a band and stuff like that is, uh, I mean, it's like having, I mean, with my band, we've got five members, so it's like having five different girlfriends or four different girlfriends at the same time. You know, you, you learn how people, because, I mean, like, you live and work together, and a lot of people can't even do that in their normal job. And to, to, to live and work with someone, you know, 24-7 and stuff you like gotta that. you got to have, like, some real connection. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, to, like, do that well. you learn a lot of, uh, a lot of you know, re respect and stuff like that for people and also for yourself, like, you know, just taking care of, uh, just living life, you know, as a good person and, you know, making sure that you go out there and kill it every day and to, uh, you know, really take care of yourself because it's like the more you respect yourself, the more you respect the people around you. And, uh, you know, and like, you know, that was something that I, I learned the hard way. Like I didn't realize, you know, when I was acting all crazy and stuff like that in the band before I had left, like, you know, I wasn't respecting myself very much. And so I was just respecting all those around me as well by not doing that. So, you know, you learn, uh, you learn a lot about yourself and a lot about others, you know, being in a band, especially if you're doing as long as we have, you know what I mean? And it's better late than never to learn that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you guys are currently working on your fourth album with the same producer that you guys worked with on your second, this is war album. Yeah. What is it like working with him with Ken? And why did you choose him to work with him? Um, you know, Funny, actually, I, I had I had left the band right before we went in to do that album, and I had heard that we were supposed to go back to John Feldman and stuff, and I was excited to go back with him because working with Feldman was actually always a dream of mine. So when we got to do our second album with him, it was uh, it was phenomenal, and I think that he did a good job on on the guys' uh, newest album, Ungrateful. I think that was I think he did a killer job. I think that the guys went in there with a more definite, um, you know idea of what they wanted to go for and I think they accomplished it and I think their their new album is great actually uh, I didn't listen to it for a really long time I actually to be honest I didn't listen to it until I came back to the band but you know I heard one or two tracks but after I heard the entire album I, I think there's some definite bangers on there and there's some good choruses I like it yeah. well over the years being an influential band as you are has any other music or any other bands influenced you on your music um you know um it, it's that's where I don't want to say no, because uh, I mean, obviously, being a musician, like an artist, you get inspired by you know everything around you inspires you. It is an inspiring thing, you know what I mean. Um, and but I try, I personally, I try not to feed into other bands' music too much or anything like that because I feel like it kind of hinders my creativity and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, you know, I enjoy listening to other bands' music and stuff like that and like studying other bands, seeing what they do, mostly on recordings and stuff like that. Like when I'm trying to check out a new producer or something like that, I'll listen to a, a band that I like that maybe went with the producer I was thinking about and I, and I, and I listen to you know, the previous album versus the new album, but I studied it in a way of like, okay, here's the progressions they used on the previous albums, here's the progressions in the style of songwriting on the new album, how much of that was the band, how much that was the producer, and I kind of, uh, and I, and that's the kind of influence that I, that I will like, you know, kind of take and grasp for myself, kind of like, through the music, you know, what are they doing, I kind of use that to not like, write songs like them, or not like, rewrite their songs, but, you know, use their songwriting technique that they use on that album to kind of open more doors for myself. Exactly, and with the passion you have for it as well, you obviously just explode with it, and everyone yeah. just takes it as it is, and it's just lovely. Yeah, you know, we just put our own twists on it. Oh. What are some preferences that you have at venues that you like to play at? Um, I'd say, uh, I mean, well, okay, like, here we go. Like, this, like, the stage we played the other day compared to the stage that there is today, like, the stage is a lot higher, which is cool, and, uh, it, because yesterday, uh, actually, I mean, it was it was a cool show because the stage was a little lower. The, the fans are right there, all the kids are right there. But when they get when they get crazy, and start crowd surfing. Like I got hit in the face with my microphone like three times, actually. And actually, when I was younger, I had uh, I was playing basketball and I broke my tooth and I had it rebuilt. And on a previous tour, a microphone hit me in the face and cracked my tooth again. Uh, yeah. So it's like, I like playing venues where the stage is a little higher, so it's like, you know, I can still reach down and give the kids daps, high fives and shit, yes. but, you know, not when they can, like, knock over my mic stand and, like, you know, hit me in the face or whatever with it. Well, besides music, do you have any other hobbies that you like to do? Um, you know, I, I really love watching movies. I love acting and stuff like that. I've always been really yeah. big into theater and all that kind of shit. Um, I like to... Uh, 
honestly, you know, it's really just really that. I like I like I like getting tattooed. I like watching movies. I like, you know, theater stuff like that. I love playing soccer. That's one thing soccer I really sport. love, man. Yeah. Have you seen the Book of Mormon? No, I haven't, but I want to see so that fun. so bad. It was a good movie. Yeah? yeah? That's what's up. Heck yeah. Yeah, man, it's a good movie. It's a good play in uh, South Park, just written, written amazing time. But, um, yeah. Hey, guys, you were watching Calibre TV, and I was hanging out with Max Green of Escape the Fate. Make sure you check them out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Follow them, like them, and support them. You're such a